Hello everyone, and welcome to Betis' VOD review of G2 vs Splice. Let's talk about some League of Legandos, starting with the draft. So, G2 decided to ban Azir, Karma, Aatrox. The purpose of the Azir ban is not only is it directed towards Humanoid, I believe G2 banned Azir for the entire weekend, so it's something that they didn't want to have to deal with. The Karma ban doesn't surprise me too much, it's something that they clearly didn't want to put priority on. Um... So they just wanted to take it off the board. Very strong champion in the current meta. Aatrox ban surprised me a little bit. Perhaps they were worried about Splice's ability to flex it between top and mid. Um, and they didn't want to have to first pick it, maybe. I wonder if with the Mordekaiser ban... No, there's definitely good picks into the Aatrox. Things like Kennen is still fine. You could also play Nico into it. So The Aatrox ban is a little strange to me. Thinking more about it. Because... Like... What purpose does it serve, you know? What advantage do you gain? Hmm. Not really sure on the Aatrox ban. I'll have to ask him about that one. Uh, Splice, though. The Mordekaiser ban, not too surprising. The Olaf ban, directed towards G2. I think Olaf is just considered pretty strong in the meta right now. Pardon me. And then the Pike ban. <laughs> well, the Pike ban is a G2 special, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, the Olaf ban is quite interesting. Largely because I don't think, as far as I'm aware, that, um, like, Olaf is, uh... Oh, Yankos is a massive Olaf player. I'm gonna do a quick check. Let's have a look. Yankos, 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 Yankos. So, so far, this split... Once it eventually loads. Um... How many Yankos games? So, he's had one Olaf game this split, and he's lost on it. So, I mean, like, we all know that he can play Olaf, but it's not something that G2 typically put a lot of priority on. So I guess the main reason is Spice is actually thinking about a Silas pick. Because I know Olaf does really well into the Silas. We saw that when Fnatic played up against Rogue. But, like, you can't generate any kind of pressure into the Olaf. Hmm. Yeah, so I think that's the main reason. Could be. Could be, could be. Um, okay, so the first bit, Kiana, is just a G2 thing. They really wanted to play it, and they think that it's fine to blind pick it. They can also flex it, probably between three rolls. Um, you would imagine mid and top would be the primary two, but you would imagine that Perks can play it as well. Um, the Lux Silas picks are not surprising at all. Very strong in the current meta. You take the Silas away from Yankos as well. Um, this just makes a lot of sense. I think this is safe. The Gragas Yasuo... This, again, suggests that the Kiana might be going top lane because uh, Yasuo can flex into all three roles, so G2 doing what they always do. They have a triple flex here with both the Kiana and the Yasuo, and they have the Gragas that can also uh, technically triple flex too because Caps have been playing it a lot in solo queues. So you've got jungle, mid, and support. So, like, Splice have no idea where anything is going here with regards to the draft. Uh, and so they lock in the Akali. And the Akali is probably because um, Akali usually does quite well into melee matchups. But also, after 6, I've been told that Akali is quite a good matchup into the Yasuo as well. So I think Akali is a pretty good answer here to both of these champs. And it puts G2 into a situation where um, Humanoid is probably set up for success like this. So of course G2 are planning on flexing this to bot lane. I believe we even talked about it in the cast. Like This is something that you always have to be afraid of, but it's also a very strong mid-jungle. So... It's one of the obnoxious things, again, about G2. You never really know what you're drafting against. So then Splice with the Elise ban, like, you can see that they think that this Gragas is support as well. Um, they want to get rid of, like, strong early game junglers that can do pretty well into the Silas. So they just take them off the board. Uh, and the Nico ban makes sense to me as well because, um, again, it's another triple flex that so they can move pretty much anywhere in the draft. It's one of Wonder's best champions, in my opinion, right now. And I think that... This is just a smart ban all round, especially against the likes of G2. Um, the Poppy, I think because of all their dashes, <laughs> and they know that Vizichachi is a uh, is a big Poppy player, this makes sense to me. It was actually pretty good awareness, because I wouldn't think to ban a Poppy. But it's just respect to him as an individual, and like what he's capable of playing, and it would actually just be a really good pick into these. Um, and then the Gnar. Uh, the Gnar, I guess, is just a range matchup. 
But this also suggests that they don't want to have to put the Yasuo top lane, right? Because if Na gets locked in, then they then feel the need to flex the Yasuo top. And they also know that Vizichachi is happy to play it. So they don't want to run the risk. They want to run this duo bot. They've pretty much committed to that. And they want to keep their, their top flexible along with the mid. And then they want to save the jungle pick for last. So this is fine. The Lucian priority, we got to hear from uh, Bwipo on the analyst desk talk a little bit about how he likes this much more into this duo because you have to be willing to fight this duo early on and be able to set up plays. And I think that when you have Silas, Lux, Lucian, it's not the strongest early game, but it is at least something that you can work with to at least try and attack this lane, which I think is really important in the early game. Uh, so I do agree with uh, Bwipo. I think this was a good pick here, good shift in priority, but I think it does put a little bit more emphasis on trying to get ahead in the early game. Uh, the Victor Sejuani answer from G2, they needed AP damage because they're currently running double AD and they expect to put this in support, so it's probably not going to have that much damage available to it. However, as we know in the game, that's a little bit different, um, but they definitely wanted a little bit more reliable um, CC, or sorry, a little more reliable AP damage. And then the Sejuani here, I think just adds a little bit of engage. It synergizes extremely well with both Kiana and Yasuo. Um, I think that it does fine into Silas, but when I was speaking to Yankus, he says, I think people get scared of picking Sejuani into Silas because he can steal your ulti away, and you don't want to give a Sejuani ulti to the enemy team, but he was like, I don't really care about that. If they have Sejuani ult, then they have Sejuani ult. Um, but he thinks that just picking the champion here is just relatively safe. The Gangplank pick surprised me a little bit, but it then reinforced the idea that they wanted to play around bot side of the map, so they wanted to try and attack this duo. So once he hits level 6, they maybe look for dives, or they look for ganks, or whatever, but this suggested to me that Splice's whole early game plan was to attack the bot side of the map. And that Gangplank, it's a rough matchup for the Gangplank, range versus melee, but also just, he once he gets his upgrade, he has so much more wave clear, so the Gangplank sits under his tower, and then once he's under his tower against a Victor, there's just so much harassment that comes out of this champion that you fall to a massive CS deficit. So you're definitely not picking this for the lane. Maybe you at scale at a certain point, but I think it takes a while, and even then, Victor scales really well into the late game and offers a lot of value in fights, so... I feel like you're picking this gangplank because you want to play around bot. So I feel like Spice's whole early game plan early is um, to attack the bot side of the map. Mid should be fairly neutral regardless of whether you play into the Kiana or the Asso. If they suddenly flex the Victor mid, this is going to struggle a little bit more in terms of the laning phase. But Kiana and Yasuo, absolutely fine matchups for Akali, I think. I personally never played Akali into Kiana, um, but I could see how this should be fine for Akali. She shouldn't lose this matchup. Um, but I also don't think she necessarily wins it. Maybe at 6 she gets kill pressure, because she does against most things at 6. But we'll see. We'll, we'll track it once we get into game. But yeah, Spice is all game plan, get ahead early. Um, G2, no, at level 6, so they can win 2v2 bot, regardless, just because of how much burst this duo has. I think that G2 would... Hmm... They don't want to play around the Victor. They can look to play around this, but I guess what they actually want to do is get Kiana ahead, because... The sooner Kiana is ahead, the sooner she gets Tiamat, and when she's got Tiamat and Wave Clear, then she can look to roam, and then she can look to attack the side lanes. But I think you want to try and get the Kiana snowballing as early as possible, and in an Assassin versus Assassin matchup, having a fed Assassin is always more advantageous for you. So if I'm G2, I would look to play around mid. Then at 6, I would look to translate my lead bot. Meanwhile, for Spice, I think they need to put a little bit more attention bot lane early, maybe get some summoner spells out from the Gragas and the Yasuo in order to... Um, reduce the risk of their all-in. And then, again, at 6, when the Gangplank has 6 and can add his ultimate in, um, then they want to look for a dive bot. But I think this 2v2 is weak compared to this 2v2. Because I think melee plus Sejuani is really strong in the 2v2. So, yeah. G2 should look to play around mid. Splice should look to play around bot. Is the simple reality. In. But I do think Splice struggle a little bit in how they get priority. Top lane they lose, mid lane is even, bot lane in theory they win, but it's not long before they start losing that one as well. So yeah. Anyway, any questions regarding the draft? Yanko spams Kiana and Solo kill all the time. Well, there you go. It's a quadruple flex then. They can also potentially put the Kiana in the jungle. The Today is very, very hot. <laughs> Wonder can play it, perks can play it, caps can get to go. Does not Splice heavily like CC outside of size? See, like, 
Part of my issue with Spice's comp was that if it doesn't get ahead early, I'm not really sure what it does. Because Akali wins on side, and Silas, like, outscales most other junglers. Um... So I feel like Splice have an advantage in things like 2v2 and attacking the side. And also G2's comp is like pretty snowball-y. But at the same time, like, I don't, know, I don't think Splice necessarily outscale overall. Pardon me. I think it's easier for G2 to force fights. And unless Splice get ahead early, I don't think they can generate pressure anywhere on the map. The wave clear is fine, but it's not the best. They're pretty good at finding picks, but so are G2. Yeah. Spice's comp just feels a little a little all over the place. The Gragas Yasuo, I think, made it a little harder for them. Because I think their first half draft is good, and then this bit is like... Because like, I like the Lucian in the sense that it's good into Yasuo Gragas. But it then relies on them beating this Yasuo Gragas. And if they don't, then I don't think they have any ways to come back, right? Because I don't think they outscale. Because Yasuo versus Lucian, I give that to Yasuo every time. And then in a team fight as well, you've got Victor Sejuani. Yasuo also works. Gragas in this situation is good, and Kiana's considered one of the best like team fighting assassins in the game. So, I think Spice are a little limited in options, personally. All right, people aren't asking me questions about the draft anymore, so I'm going to move on. Anyway, if you have any more questions in the draft, you can, uh, you can ping and we can we can check i'll leave some game sounds on you can listen to the sweet sound of i think it was me and dracos and ender i think was here as well all right i'm gonna put this on 1.5 because we don't need to watch it at normal speed all right so early lane setups nothing too dramatic this does suggest that silas might be looking to start topside Have a look at some of the rune choices. Nothing too crazy. Aerial Wonder makes sense. Aftershock Yankos, Electrocute, Conqueror on the Asuo. Yep, nothing too crazy from what I can tell. Yeah, so this duo gets to lane earlier so that they can already guarantee push against melee matchup. Really important because remember we talked a lot about how Spice want to play towards the bot side of the map. Early on. Um, Yanko's going to start on his red and look to path up towards top. Potentially cover Victor, who he's assuming will look to push. So Xerxes is going to do a full clear top. And Yanko's is going to clear out his Raptors, because he has really strong wave clear. And then move up towards his top side. So one of the cool things about this matchup... So this is one of the reasons why I think Akali does well into melee matchups. Pardon me. Um, Akali does really well in like this range that you can see now, where every time you try to last hit, she can land a Q on you. And then when you back away, it's even easier because she gets bonus movement speed when she works towards you. Um, and then she can proc a passive. So she does Q, passive, auto, and uh, you lose like a lot of your HP. And it's easier for her to get wave clear against melee matchups early because her Q is also AoE. And the, the number of minions that it hits, the damage isn't reduced. So that's why I was saying in draft that this is fine for a humanoid. And you can already see that the gangplank being forced back. And because Cobby and North Garen got to the wave earlier, uh, Perks and Mickey are forced to play on the defense. So now you can see that both junglers are actually on the top side of the map. This gives uh, Victor a little bit more safety. And you would assume that Yankos is looking to pass towards this top scuttle. Humanoid has a bit of push early on. And Zerse now passing bot. He's going to get information on Raptors. He's going to see that they're gone. He's going to assume that jungle's top side. That's why the pings come out. Good awareness by Zerse. And now we get pings coming out from G2. I remember how he said we wanted to see them play around mid. Sad I didn't get to see this trade actually. Because Humanoid actually takes so much damage. And this really hurts him. Because bear in mind that ping just came out right. Look, you can see it here. Humanoid knows that um, Yankos is in this vicinity. So there's the risk of his Atrachi maybe getting dive, but it's a victor, so the probability is low. Or mid is going to get ganked. 
but instead he chooses to stay rather than immediately back off. Because he, well, he knows that the wave's not in a great spot. But then he gets collapsed on. And then this dive. Let's, let's slow this down. Oh. Oh. So Caps tanks. To, he can take three tower shots. He knows he even pops the rejuve pot in order to get that extra bit of health. Yankos knows that he has red buff. The ignite or red buff probably would have killed him, but just to be sure. And then the cool thing is, the E then procs his aftershock. So he then gets tower aggro, and he gets the bonus resistances, and he walks out. That was a good dive. See, but Humanoid thinks he's safe because he has fire. She has enough mobility and HP to get out. I think this was a bit of a greedy play from Humanoid, in my opinion. But he was not expecting this dive to happen. Oh, so good. Super good. Oh, boy. Great dive. And now we get to watch it again. Nice. So, I can't tell if you reset or not. Ah, oh, okay. So, this is the other thing we need to track, right? So, let's go back. So, you can see here the wave um, is bouncing now towards Humanoid. So, even though Cap's got that kill, they're going to clear out this minion wave. And because Humanoid has TP, he's going to catch it. But rather than clear it out, he's actually going to set up a freeze. So he TPs back in. I don't even know if Caps gets to push it all the way out. He didn't. He didn't even get to push it all the way out. So Humanoid TPs back in. And then he pulls the wave here. And then he's even able to get a ward as well. So this sets up a slow push towards him. So even though he's just died, he actually gets a huge XP uh, advantage here. This is so good for him. Caps is really sad. He's like, Jungler, why didn't you help me push out? But of course, they were both pretty low because they just dived a tower. So, like, this was the, the risk of them setting up this dive because they now just burnt all of their summoner spells. And Humanoid, with a really good use of the teleport, enables him to actually stay relevant in the lane. So, you can already see a massive CS discrepancy starting to build. And now Caps is also forced to overextend without Flash in the lane. Good stuff. And Splice have priority bots. So, the way in which they wanted this lane to go so far in the other game is going well. The only lane that's suffering right now is at the top side of the map, but we knew that. Again, the whole goal for Spice is to play around bot lane, and uh, G2, they wanted to try and snowball Caps. So far, Caps is at a deficit. I think if you looked at the gold, right now it would be even, but then Humanoid is going to pick up all this farm, and he's probably going to be a little bit ahead. And look, ping's coming down. They know where the jungler is. Maybe Zerse looks to path bot. He's going to get spotted, though. Okay. So there's no camps on the top side of the bot map. Top side of the bot map. <laughs> Yankos' blue side of the map does not have any camps. So this suggests to me that he might be looking for a potential play on the top lane. Very easy prediction. And I'm wrong. <laughs> Why does he go there, then? He has walls. And maybe he's hoping that Gromp respawns in time. Maybe. And he just bases. Silas just hanging around mid, because Humanoid's not taking some good trades. I'd really love to see how Caps is trading in this lane. Because you can see that Humanoid's actually forced to play on the defense. Which is quite interesting. Okay. All right. So, Perks and Mickey know that Sejuani is on the top side of the map. They have that information, right? They have all their summoner spells. Kobe's just uses TP. They just hit level four. So in their head, they're like, okay, our two v two, OP. We can win this. We have ignite. Her heal isn't gonna matter. Let's just go, right? Problem is, they also see Zerse clear this ward. It was literally pinged. Okay? And then they go for the all-in. Now, they have an idea that Sejuani's on the way. But they aren't able to kill Kabe. And in their heads, they're like, if we kill Kabe, 
And then it's a two versus three with jungler coming. We win. Easy peasy. But he doesn't die. And then Xerxes there. And he's forced to flash. And I think this play was the greedy one. I don't think... Bum, 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 bum. Good win more. Then he goes back out. He doesn't commit because he's worried about how much damage he's doing. And then good flash from Kobe there. That was good. I like the flash. Because the moment Perks is gone, that's when he flashes away. And then Perks goes back in. And then Zerse finishes him off. Red smite. Auto. And then Yankus is here and he's like, well, this didn't go to plan. So, yeah. I think that was... Uh, that was one of those... If we'd killed him, it would have worked out. But we got unlucky. I think he's right. If they did kill him, it probably would have worked out. But they didn't. And he died. But bear in mind, G2 had full information of what was going on there. They knew Zerse was in the bot side of the map. They knew that Yankos was top side. They knew that this was a possibility. Yet they went for it anyway. And I'm pretty confident that their logic was just kill Kobe and we win. But they didn't kill Kobe. Woo -hoo. When in North Scarin room. Oh, then you can see him making his way mid. He's like, hey, red buff, let's go. Want to try and maybe invade this? Maybe set up a play? Hmm. And Mickey also rooms mid. I'm sorry for burping so much, pardon me, but it's because I'm drinking Sprite. Oh no. Right, let's, let's, so this is now a mistake from Kobe's perspective. So Kobe knows that both supports are mid lane, right? The fact that Spice are putting pings down, I think, I'm pretty sure in this situation, North Garen is just here to cover Humanoid so that he can push the wave out and there's a potential risk of Mickey ganking him. But now everyone knows where everyone is, right? Because Splice just saw Sejuani on this red buff. They pinged it out. They know that Sejuani is in the bot side of the map. They also know that this Silas is here because of this control ward. So G2 know where, where Spice is. Splice have a pretty good idea of where G2 is. Both teams know where the other one is, right? Yet... Kobe, with no summoners, still walks up to the lane against the Yasuo. Now, in a one versus one, he's probably fine, but of course, the Sejuani comes, which helps him apply the Sejuani passive. And this is ultimately what gets him killed, because the Sej he's not going to kill him 1v1, which is why I think Kobe feels comfortable. But, like, that's just, like, this is just bad, though, because he, he knows, like, here are the pings. <laughs> ping, ping. There's Sejuani. She's on the red buff. Sejuani's on red buff, guys. Just want to let you all know. Sejuani is on the red buff. So just watch out. She might come mid. She might come bot. We don't know. She's not coming mid. She's not coming mid. She's, she's bot lane. So now... Let's backtrack to the draft where we said the Spice really need to focus on playing through bot. Vizitarchi got six, but he used his ultimate to relieve pressure top sides. And um, Xerxes is now six. So this would be the window in which they would look to actually try and make a play bot. But they don't. And they can't because their AD carry is dead. And now he's a level behind. And that farm difference and his death doesn't mean anything anymore. Both carries are in the same position. They're actually going to give him plates as well. He's not going to reset. I suppose he doesn't need to because he just came back off a of base. This is also really dangerous from North Garen. Walking through his own half of the jungle. Yeah, this is really greedy, in my opinion. I mean, he gets out. But I still think it's greedy. See, but now Spice is in a situation where they have to try and force plays bot, I think. Perks has just been happy solo farming. He's like, yeah, I've got nice big XP advantage. I'm happy. The level 6 mark for Perks and Mickey is coming up. Well, for Mickey, more importantly. Cap's going for the all-in. Oh, see, I, I talked about this on cast. What I love about this is that you use the grass to stay invisible so that um, Humanoid can't attack you and you can't attack him. So you're both just shrouded. But this is one of Akali's biggest strengths because you can't trade back while she's trading onto you, whereas you can completely nullify that on Kiana. I think it's super cool. It's really, really cool.
goes for a bit of an all-in. He probably wanted to try and ult backwards. I don't know if his ult is up. Yeah, it is. He may have wanted to try and ult backwards into Yankos. But I think his his W took him on a bit of a weird direction, yeah. If he W'd to like this, he probably could have uh, done a thing. But he doesn't. So Humanoid can see this potential dive coming. Right now he's hanging around to get what gold and experience that he can because he doesn't want to fall behind. Great utilization of where Yankos has pressure in order to, like... This is one of the cool things that Yankos has been doing a lot. He's playing around the map of where he has pressure. So now he's zoning Humanoid away. They're not really focused on diving. They just want the plate. Wait. Oh. Um... They're just going to play for the plate, which is all good. All right, but we've got to set expectations now. Splice bot lane is both hit level six. Humanoid's TP is just about to come up. Wonder's teleporter is about to come up. Vizichachi's teleporter is about to come up. Vizichachi has ultimate. Xerse doesn't have ultimate. What happened to his ultimate? What did he use his ultimate on? Oh, he stole Kiana's ultimate, so he used it there because it was probably just about to run out. Fair enough. So, Splice can still make a play bot. I think it's really important that they do. I think they need to get this duo ahead as much as they can. They need to make a play bot. And they have all the tools in the kit to make it happen. Because then they can get a Drake. They can potentially swap their bot lane up towards top side. Go on, mate. They can maybe make a play around Herald. So what do they do? What do they do? So again, Yanko is heading to the mid lane because he realizes that there's a potential for a dive. Because the minion wave is slow pushing. Yeah. Well, he just stacks a minion wave. I say slow pushing. He Caps just clears it all out. And he's like, all right, there's a minion wave in it. <gasps> so again, Yanko's playing around where he has pressure. We talked a lot about how he wants to play around mid. Uh, so what does he do? He goes in. He ulties immediately. Humanoid doesn't get stunned. Caps then get stuck between a rock and a hard place because Zerse is still hanging around. And then Yankos does this, in my opinion, very cool and unexpected play and gets the kill onto Humanoid. So it ends up working out because of a bit of a misplay from Humanoid, but also a misplay from Caps. I think we should get a replay. Right, I need to replay first. Do we get the mid lane one? Yeah, we do. I'll come to the bot lane one in a second. Ah. Oh. So Caps just alt, like... Meh. <laughs> so what he should have done... We'll get to this play in a second. So, is he sitting on an element right now? I can't tell if that's an element or not. That must be an element. He definitely has an element, right? So, Humanoid reads it, which is good, but he still gets rooted because it's guaranteed. Because if you do E plus Q, the Q automatically goes into the direction of the nearest target. Right? But then what Cap should have done after the root is he should have done W to this wall, positioned over here, and then altered that way. If he'd reset his Q, he would have gotten the kill, and he wouldn't have needed any help. But he doesn't. He he assumes he's going to get the stun here. And then he gets outplayed. It's unfortunate. So let's have a look at this play. So remember, all game, all we've done is talk about how... Splice's bot lane need to get ahead. And the thing that they need to be careful of is when Pooks and Mickey get level 6. So what we haven't seen any of is any jungle involvement from Xerse outside of when we saw that one gank bot. Which I don't think was like pre-mediated. It was just Perks and Mickey tried to go for an all-in and Xerse was in the area. So these two thought these two thought that they had pr uh, safety and pressure and obviously it ended up working out. But we haven't seen any of the ganks. Now admittedly this duo is really hard to gank. 
but you should be setting up plays, in my opinion, around the level 6 mark. Because that's when this team is its scariest. And bear in mind, Mickey was level 5. They had a level advantage. But now, because of this play that happens mid, these two know they can go for the all-in. Because the risk of jungle presence is very low. So, this is why Perks and Mickey are, in my opinion, like deserve a lot of praise. Because they the immediacy to recognize no jungler, no mid laner, um, we can go for this all-in. And so they do. They then execute the all-in. And they find themselves a kill. And Cobb is now forced out of the lane. Caps messed up the execution, but this should have been a very actually easy one for zero if he just played it better. Humanoid does a great job, to be fair to him. He punishes the mistake very well, but then he overstays when he should have just based and let Zerse push this one out. But then the TP play happens too, which we didn't get. So the thing is here... Because he dies and the cool uh, the death times are pretty short, he then gets a flanking TP because they're trying to like zone these two away. But obviously their ulties are down now and all their ignites are down. So Splice is like, we can punish. And this is an overextension. This is them not respecting the TP. This is a genuine mistake from Perks and Mickey. Good use of the wind wall to like deny the binding for as long as possible. Um, but then Mickey is forced to give up his life. Wait, he has flash. He could have flashed this. Oh, but he flashes anyway. <laughs> Ugh. They're just really good. <laughs> they should have died, in my opinion. They really should have died. That was a mistake. So I think Splice so far have failed to play around the bot lane in any fashion. Humanoid did have an advantage in mid, but I feel like Yankos has been playing more around mid than um, uh, Zerse has. And, like, they've been exerting so much pressure onto Humanoid. And then Gangplank's just been sitting top lane crying under his tower. Why can't I play League of Legends? <laughs> okay, again, keep an eye on the minimap. So... Mickey's back to lane first. Not sure how, but he is. So he goes bot first to clear out some vision. Then he always looks for roam mid. That's what supports do, right? They they base first and then they look for roam. But Spice have actually committed to a swap. I can only imagine to get Vizichachi out of this. But also because Kabe and Norskaren don't want to play the 2v2 anymore. Because they realize that they can't win it. So now they're looking to cross map and trade. So they're thinking if they go two or three versus wonder, they can maybe get a dive. At the very least, they can look to get Rift Herald. And then with Rift Herald, they can trade top tower, get first tower blood, get gold onto Kabe, and then not be so weak in the mid game, right? So they're like, okay, we failed the 2v2, let's swap. But they actually commit to a play mid. Bear in mind, they've made this swap, and like I can understand if they just want to force Caps back to then get priority over mid to then move up through top river, but I feel like this is just a huge overcommitment from Humanoid. Because then Mickey's here. And this is all because, like, either G2 expect the swap, because look, Yasuo starts pathing towards bot, from what I understand. Yeah, look, he starts pathing bot, and then he pivots to mid. Oh, it's because they see the Silas here, so they know this is coming. So they already start pivoting mid, and I think the reason is because they're assuming that they're going to cover the mid lane so that Caps can reset after this play. I don't know how much gold he's sitting on, but this is an, a huge overcommitment from Humanoid. And then they get the kill. And so then as three, and then Sejuani and the Victor comes down, so they can actually look to... Oh, they don't threaten the tower, because this has too much wave clear. But then they all... Oh, they set up for Herald. Man, this is like... <laughs> you think you see the plays with G2. Maybe it was obvious. Maybe I'm an idiot. But like... So in my head, what G2 would look to do here is... Um, they can see the Caps is being chased. So Perks is heading mid to help cover. And he's not going bot, right? The reason why he doesn't want to go bot is because they recognize that a swap is happening. Because they... Look, so they see the TP top, Victor's going to get information, oh no, 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 it's got nothing to do with the top lane, it's got absolutely nothing to do with the top lane, I'm wrong, 
Why do they make this? Hmm. Maybe just at this point in the game, they're already setting it for Herald play. Or maybe they're expecting Splice to swap. I don't know. I'll have to ask Grabs. One of the G2 players. But like, we talked a lot about why Splice want to swap, right? Which is that they can't lane 2v2 against the Yasuo and the Gragas anymore, right? So what they want to do is move up towards topside. Hopefully, uh, with a numbers advantage, force the Victor out of lane. And then maybe with their pressure, they can look to get Rift Herald. And the purpose of the play mid is so that they can force Kiana back so that they can gain river control topside so that they can then look for the, the herald play and the top tower and the plates, right? So because they then assume that perks will stay bot lane and he'll then go for those plates and then they'll make the cross map and they'll trade. Pardon me. So then they go for this mid play and in my opinion, they've now got mid prior, right? But Humanoid overcommits, and they think that they can get this kill. And in my opinion, this is just disrespect from Humanoid for where anyone else could be on the map. Because Gragas hasn't shown bot, Perks hasn't shown anywhere, and they could be anywhere. Oh, look, they're here. And then he gets the one shot. And then what Victor does is after pushing top, he starts making his way down. And G2, in my opinion, initially go for the tower, but then they realize that you can see the ping here on the Herald, and then it comes through. And they're like, we can't go for a uh, tower, let's not bother, let's just go for Herald instead. So Cap should reset, and then Perk should look to take the tower. And then they want to keep, <laughs> they want to keep Victor into the gangplank because of how well the matchup is. So they just send him bot, and they actually keep Cap's mid, and they just keep the lanes as standard. So because of that overcommitment mid, G2 immediately... Oh, man. Like, G2 gets such a big punish. For what was a single overcommitment from Humanoid. Because that whole game plan is gone now. Not only does Kobe and Noskaren not get out of the 2 versus 2, they don't get the Herald, and they don't get to cross map. So now they're just stuck in the same situation that they were in before, but worse. <laughs> Because now Kiana has a kill, and G2 have Herald, and everyone is still in the same lanes. So Splice is a real sad panda right now. <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, well, what options does Splice even have? Their main goal in the other game was to play around bot lane, which they failed to do. And now G2 are just keeping the pressure up. They want to put more gold onto Caps. 320 gold. Oh. Damn. But look at how Mickey's always moving. He's like, alright, well, my ass is safe. He's just going to push in base, so I should look for a roam. So he walks where he has vision. He's got full information. And... If nothing else, he's just here to cover. Like, what else is he going to do on the map right now? He can't get deep vision, can he? So he's just going to help be an extra number, force Humanoid back off the tower. And then he's like, oh, we're going for a bit of an all-in? Well, all right then. Guess we'll do that. And then the ultimate from Caps fails. But So now he resets, because he knows that he has the time to do so. So now Yankus is like, oh, we got to keep the pace up. <laughs> So where did Yankos come from? So after they get Harold, they secure River. Yankos, bear in mind, he just reset, right? So he's like full. He doesn't need to base. So he's like, alright, I'll come mid and we can use because bear in mind they have two choices. They can use the Harold top or they can use the Harold mid. They don't even have to use it now, but they want to try and get plates because they think it's more valuable than just getting a tower. So he decides to use it mid, because he knows where Silas is, and he knows where the duo are. And then they get vision of Silas top, and they're like, well, okay, using the, the, the Rift Herald top won't actually get us any value. There's no point. Because, like, they have three people there, and so they'll be able to clear it out. So let's use it where they have fewer numbers, which is mid, so we can get more gold onto Caps. So Yankos stays just out of range, gives the gold to Caps. They get this all in onto Humanoids. Zerse now responds by coming mid with North Scarum. They gotta take the long way round while they keep the tower alive. It nearly results in a kill, but Cap's still got a kill's worth of gold in his back pocket. 
Now he gets to reset. And Caps isn't, uh, Yankos isn't done yet. He's like, well, we need to set up for Drake soon. So while everyone is resetting, I'll get this. Yeah, he should reset. Because everyone else is resetting. I think Caps maybe should have reset a little earlier. You can see he started his base, but he decided to take an extra wave. So the back timings are a little messed up from G2. Because you've already got Perks and Mickey, like, in a lane <laughs> when everyone else is based. So now they send the Kiana bot. Hmm. But why? So I wonder if it's because of the itemization. Because, of course, Wanda has TP, right? But there's nothing that he's going to TP to on the top side of the map. So the TP is kind of irrelevant at this point in time. And Humanoid only has armor in his inventory, whereas Vizichachi has one piece of magic resistance. So now they swap. So Wanda's now in a matchup where the enemy hasn't itemized against them. And he has a ranged advantage, and he has a level advantage, and he has his flash, whereas Humanoid doesn't. Meanwhile, Caps, while he doesn't have Teleport, neither does Chachi, and you would assume that G2 know that. So Caps also should have Kill Pressure, because sure, he's itemized a bit of magic resistance, which isn't great, but Visit Chachi has no armor, and in a straight up 1v1 duel, I'm going to give the advantage to Caps on the Kiana. I wonder if that's why they did it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Perks and Mickey still obliterating this lane. And I'm, what I say by obliterating is an AD champion is going even with the ranged one, and Yasuo scales harder. He's already completed his first item because of all the plates they've got. They can't really threaten the tower because their siege is kind of weak. Because remember, you've only got like a lot of melee champions, so this siege on this comp is not very good. Yanko's still. Still not done. He's still sitting on the same control ward that he had from after he reset. And now he's using the pressure that he has bought. They've seen the Silas top, so he knows he can go for this invade. And now they're setting up for Drake, so they should start this one off. They are forced back. Mickey bases and is now looking for a roam. He's heading towards Drake because of the potential collapse from Splice. Wonder just acting as wave clear while Caps gets bot tower. It's just like G2 is just doing everything on the map right now. And what can Splice even do? <laughs> like I'm like, what what are their win conditions now with this comp? Find a good pick? Yeah, I suppose. I think it was really important for Zerse to have an impact early and he didn't. Oof. That could have been a big kill. But they just got two towers in such fluid movement. Yanko still hasn't based. He's He's been so efficient with his time on the map. Like. Okay, let's just appreciate this. Let's, let's go back. So. So look, he resets. And he's back out on the map at 11.45, right? And let's only watch Yankos, right? Only watch Yankos in the bottom right hand screen. So, 11.45, he had based, right? He comes out on the map. All the shenanigans happen, and he's like, right, first we get Rift Held. So he gets Rift Held. He and Mickey do it, right? So again, keep your eyes on Yankos, okay? So Yankos, on the mini-map. He's doing Rift Held. His team's helping him out. Great stuff, right? He secures it. He's now deciding where to put the Rift Herald. So he's like, okay, I can either put it top or I can put it mid. But then he kind of threatens the enemy jungle because he knows he's got Kiana here. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And so he's like, okay, there are three people top. Let's put it mid, right? So he puts it mid. He helps his team secure a bunch of plates mid. He gives all the gold to his mid laner, right? Nidhi gets a kill. Doesn't quite succeed. That's fine. They get a bunch of plates, right? So, he's secured Rift Herald, he's gotten plates for his mid laner, right? Now, moves into bot jungle, secures Scuttle Crab just as it spawns, right? 
You then think, okay, maybe he resets at this point, maybe he spends some of the gold that he's picked up, no. He then looks to clear his bot side jungle, okay? And bear in mind, the rest of his team is resetting, so he's not wasting any time here. He's not standing around doing nothing in his jungle. He's... Okay, I missed this reset. <laughs> Wait, does he actually... Yeah, okay. So then he resets, okay. I actually missed this reset, so I'm giving him way more praise than he deserves. <laughs> Because I actually then think that this reset is late because what I thought that he did was he did his red buff into Raptors And then when everyone else reset on the map, then he came back out But he didn't he reset My bad I missed that one. So there we are So now the problem with his lane is, is they can't actually do much because they don't have jungle presence But Zeus hasn't done anything this game, so maybe they're not afraid of it But now he's back on the map <laughs> Man. I thought Jankos was like, I thought he was like super efficient, but this is like, oh wow, so big brain. But then he resets, and I'm like, alright, well fair enough, the reset was fine. <laughs> but I think it was just pretty late, because you see what I mean, right? So, what I mean by that is, here, after he takes Scuttle, so Victor resets now, and Kiana resets now. So what he should do, in my opinion, is he should reset with his top and junk and his mid laner. And then when he comes back out onto the map, he can do his red and then he can do his raptors. Now, in terms of efficiency, obviously carrying these camps out earlier is better. But he's now behind in tempo because both his mid and top are based. And so he's still clearing out jungle. So, yeah. <laughs> I was a little greedy. But I mean, like, it doesn't hurt him, right? I just think that it's harder for his laners to push out on this wave. And uh, Xerse should have an opportunity to do some stuff here. But he doesn't get to leverage it much. So then Xerse looks for a gank top at 15 minutes. A little too late. Yankos gets to trade at bot side. And then of course because Victor has priority mid and the jungle is bot side. Vizichachi is forced off the tower. So there we are. Yankos now able to do the Drake. So what's Mickey doing? So Mickey bases, resets, come back mid. Notice how Perk's sitting under his tower. He's like, I see nothing. So I will just wait for the wave to come to me while Mickey roams mid to potentially cover the Drake. They have their eyes now set on the mid lane because they have a wave and Akali isn't here. Set up for a potential dive, aren't quite able to find the execution. Kiana will look to catch the bot wave to just start pushing it out again. And now their objective should be the final out of tower top. So Splice are sending, f well they sent four people mid. Like I don't think they can do anything, they can't gain pressure anywhere. I think there have been windows, but I think that comp is like really hard to pull off. Comp nearly dies again. How? How does he nearly die again? So Yankos, he just clears his top side, gives the blue to the victor, smart. Kiana clears out bot and then uses this window to move up towards mid. And so they threaten now, they threaten them away. Because now, bear in mind, they have the opportunity to roam up top through the pressure mid. And then Yankus is already on his way top to set up for this play while Kobe is alone. And he's forced to flash out. So, like, yeah, like, but you can see, right? Like, G2 were already thinking about these things, like, way in advance. So, like, I said their next goal should be top tower, right? So, let's just look at the steps that they put in place in order to secure this top tower, right? So, Kiana pushes out bot. Kiana starts making her way mid. The reason why you do this is because if you just have Kiana and Victor in mid lane, Humanoid is forced to back off because if Gragas is there as well, then you know Vizichachi is catching the wave bot and he's either forced to TP mid or Humanoid is just forced to concede, right? So, you group up mid. You guarantee numbers to help gain mid priority, right? It's difficult to challenge one to anyway because he has so much more wave clear and he zones them off the wave, right? So you can see here, Zerse doesn't hang around 
because he knows he can't challenge. He's just like wasting his time. So Caps just hangs around. He's like, okay, maybe set up for a potential flank. Either way, Humanoid is backed off. They get pressure, right? In the meantime, Yankos is just clearing his topside jungle, ready for Perks. Who's just, he's just waiting for Perks to get back to lane, right? And so they've gained the mid-priority. They have the ability to then roam up towards top, and they see an opportunity because Kobe is there by himself. But they would have been done this play whether Kobe was there or not. And now they should look for the top tower. Why do they not get it, though? It may be because they committed to the play. Maybe Cap shouldn't have gone back to bot. It could have also been because Vizitrachi spaced. No, you can see that they can't actually cut them off by going this way. So the Victor can't join the team. And because they get zoned off from this point, they no longer have access. And the Kobe survived and flashed. So now they need to regain mid-priority. They're keeping the three up top. And the Victor should look to roam top now. So here comes the Victor. We were just talking about it. The cannon minion, the cannon minion, the cannon minion dies too fast. But they'll keep repeating this over and over and over and over and over again. Or they'll reset. <laughs> Maybe I give them too much praise, but I don't know. It feels like they're always thinking about things. To me, at least. That's what it looks like. G2 is like, what do we do next? What do we do next? And they're always forward thinking. So why does he even do this? What camps is he looking for? Maybe he just wants help? Pushing out bot? I think he just wants help. How do they see... Oh, that's how they see Zerse, because of this ward. This ward here. So they start pinging it. So rather than return to the lane, he moves up. And then he catches him. And he kills him. And now they be hunting pirates. Yar. Unlucky matey. I think the only reason Zerse came was to help Vizichachi push out the lane. Yep. And Kobe's really scared because he's like, I can't approach the wave, bro. They gonna kill me. I've got no flash. What does the Aswo do? Pushes out top and then just comes mid? Yeah, he does. So he's catching the wave while... Wait, Victor doesn't base? Surprise, the Victor doesn't base. I would have thought that the Victor base and then the Aswo would just catch the mid wave. What can they even play for now? I guess they'll push out mid and they'll push out bot, but there's no wave bot. Humanoid nearly kills him. Oh. -ho. Well, I mean, this is the point. We said this in draft. Uh, Akali is good into Yasuo, and it looks like a 1v1. And it looks like he does a nice little outplay there with the E against the Q of the Yasuo. And he's able to get a really good trade. You can see he nearly kills him. Pook doesn't flash, though. And they're able to get the outplay 2 versus 1. So then they're able to trade this mid tier 2 for the top tier 1. And that's the first tower they've lost of the game. And they have a 5k gold lead. Is this where they overextend? No. Yeah, I really think this is just... I mean, it was good. Like, the deep vision was there from um, G2 because, well, they wanted Caps to keep pushing bot. So they abandon top, right? So this is something that Spice often do. They'll group as four, four-man force. So by using numbers, they can look to gain priority over like river and set up for an objective, but they still couldn't force it. But you can see that their eyes are setting on the Drake. That's what they want. And so they catch Mickey out. They finally, this is a good pick. Cause they weren't expecting this. They were expecting like Kawe to go top or something with the TP. So Mickey thinks he's safe here. He wasn't expecting the bot lane to show up, I don't think. So they get a good pick. But G2 have priority over mid. And then this is when I think the greed comes through. <laughs> so 
So for context, obviously the Ocean Drake has just spawned, right? They have push in mid and they have push in bot, but their support is dead. So this is five versus four. Now admittedly, they are quite strong and they could maybe look for this fight, but even then, they either want to go for the blue buff here or Caps just wants to kill people. <laughs> it looks to me like Caps just wants to kill people. So this is a really greedy play. And the rest of his team gets bought in. And then, of course, this TP flank sets them up being like, oh, initially, it's like... But again, also, what does Yasuo do? So he's like, oh, okay, I, I can't defend my support, fine. I'll, uh, do I group up with the team? No, 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 no. I'll just go catch another wave, and then I'll set it up, and then maybe I'll join them if needed. Wait, wait, wait. We're fighting? We're fighting? Why are we fighting? Caps is like, I'm fine. I'm on Kiana. Yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we fighting? <laughs> Yeah, this, this to me feels like a Caps, are you okay? And then the rest of his team comes in being like, okay, we'll help. And then he's like, guys, guys, I'm fine. We can actually, we can fight here, we can fight here. And Yasuo's already on his way, so like, we can definitely fight here, we can definitely fight here. But they're obviously fighting over a wall, and then there's a humanoid flanking them as well. And they end up trading one for one, and then they get chased. Damn. I mean, you can just see the goal difference, right? The fact that this was even close... Just goes to show how, like, how far ahead they even are. Like, this is a bad play. <laughs> this is just greed. They got away with it because they're rich. <laughs> this is not good. That was greedy. But again, like, Spice is calm. How do they even come back into this? <laughs> I don't know. They can't get outscaled, in my opinion. Like, you're only looking at... Humanoid is a potential late game carry. Well, that was pretty good by Poke. He was like, I'm dead. So I'll just trade one back. Whee! So. So now, G2 is sacrificing bot lane. Now remember the one that has TP, and they could have sent him bot, but they don't. Give me the life. So they sent Victor top after the reset, I would assume, to catch a wave that was there. Yeah, because you can see the tower's gone, so he was probably just pushing out a wave. And they just completely abandoned bot, because no one has TP and Baron is alive. So their focus is getting Baron control. So, they group up as mid, and they're like, right, push out top, get the top tower, start the Baron. Holy moly. So now they lose mid priority, but bear in mind, Splice have only got bot pushed in, and now they're grouping as five. They're using the window that the Gangplank generated to rotate, whereas the Victor is staying top. Caps is trying to hold mid priority by himself, and then he dies. This is how Splice forced priority by getting more people. And obviously it's a large commitment of resources. But it's a good kill into caps. And it allows us to get the tower as well. I mean the thing is G2's Baron gets spotted. Yeah, so I think the key difference here is Vizichachi used his window to roam. And Caps wasn't expecting it. Because, like, that barrel did loads of damage, right? Boom. You don't have the numbers there, but it's a lot of damage. Oh. Oh, sorry. It's the end of the day. I'm a bit sleepy. So, now G2, again, abandon bot lane, because I think they assume that it's slow pushing. Wonder, like, hasn't used his TP this game. <laughs> Caps is set up for a flank, and they cannot see him. How did he even get in there? What does he do? Sneaky, 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 sneaky. So he's like, ping, 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 we can flank, we can flank mid, we can flank mid. Akali's top. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
And now I think they just want to attack this mid group and they assume they're all going to stay there. But they don't. Vizichachi spits off. And so they're like, right, let's kill Vizichachi because he's easier. But then he gets Sterax, he gets the heal. They're now in a choke point with all these CCs coming through and they're like, ooh, no. And they don't get the kill. So like, G2 actually invests more in order to make that play happen and it doesn't pay off. However, it does guarantee the mid prio and they can then just brute force their way into the topside jungle. They don't get super deep vision down. But you think his caps just kind of abandons Mickey. Yeah. But then they need to reset. Because they need to restock their vision. And then Caps like this is a good play from here. This is something he does a lot. He often finds picks like this. He did it a lot versus Fnatic as well. It was good. He kind of snuck over the wall, right? Yeah, see, he's stuck over the wall, and he's just outside of vision. Caps, like, has a sense that someone might be there, but nope. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So now they've lost priority on top lane. So Akali's going to push that out. So splice by a little bit more time. But can we just appreciate that splice has done nothing this game? They've actually done nothing. They haven't made a single play. There's not one example of Spice doing anything. They just kind of sat there and let G2 do whatever they wanted. I think a large part of that was Zerse. Like, they have seven kills, but I never feel like that Spice got those kills through their own playmaking. I think their comp is really difficult to execute. I think ultimately what they showcase is that they don't they didn't successfully deal with the Yasuo Gragas bot lane. That Yasuo, by the way, level 15. Something that G2 is really good at, funneling farm onto perks. Mickey does roam a lot, as we can see, but like look at how fatty he is. <laughs> this Yasuo is so giga strong. <laughs> He's so strong. He's the same level as his two solo laners. Now, Mickey is only level 10, admittedly. He's a squishy Gragas, but still. He's just going to run in, ult, and then leave anyway. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, my Yan. So, so good. So they're just slowly starving out the vision up towards top side. They're keeping the Victor bot now, ready with the TP. TP gets used mid by Kobe. No one from Spice can challenge anyone. So like, Spice is just constantly forced to concede. And then Mickey groups up with Caps. They even bring Victor up. They don't even TP. They just let it like slow push. And so Humanoid's like, okay, I can go catch this because I have TP. Oh, it's just... Look, just, so this is... What, like a 1 2 2 0 0 setup, right? Where you have two people entering the jungle, which infinitely increases the safety. It's also Perks, who's really strong. So if a fight happens to break out and Mickey's with him, they can easily force it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they guarantee priority because Yankos has joined up with him, but they've also got information on where everyone is, so they know that they can leave Caps up towards topside by himself. So they've got the perfect setup to deny Splice any kind of option, so they can't even look for a pick. They just get starved out of their own jungle, and Humanoid is still bot, and he can't set up a TP flank anywhere. So G2's just like, well, you're blind now. We've gouged your eyes out. And you had to just kind of sit there and watch us do it. And now they're in they can't see anything. This whole Baron setup is so good. I mean, like, what, what, what could have Spice done? Really? The play started here. What can they actually do? They're too afraid to enter their own jungle. The gangplank is now basing, so like their resets are mismanaged. 
because Vizichachi caught an extra wave. Kobe's catching mid wave. Humanoid is not with the team and he's got nothing to TP to. They've got wave after wave that they've constantly got to deal with. And there's no opportunity for them to fight. So then G2 just like, right, we'll take Baron. I mean, it reinforces how good G2 are, in my opinion. But at the same time, I think, like, Splice's comp really hurt them in their ability to actually make any plays anywhere. They had a very narrow window with which they had to gain advantages, and they failed to do it. I do think that Zerse was, like, really invisible this game. And I honestly don't think Splice made a single play. Alright, here's their first play of the game. Didn't go so well. <laughs> they need to kill Mickey, though. Is he just getting regen from the ocean trip? Oh no, it's also Gragas. Gragas gets some like regen from his W or his passive. It's one of them. I'm pretty sure it's his W. He gets health regen. I guess when paired up with the ocean, it gives you quite a lot. I'm not sure there's much left to review at this point. <laughs> we can just kind of let the game run out. I'm kind of disappointed that... <laughs> Splice just didn't do anything. On the bright side, they got caught significantly less than they normally do. Kobe got caught out quite a few times this game as well. But he survived. I still think that he just got caught out. The thing is, like... Splice have also just kind of slowly lost. They haven't taken any gambles anywhere. Yeah. Like, name the last time we saw Gangplank ult used proactively to do anything. Right, here's the first play. Here's another one. I say first play. Here's another one. Will they actually get a kill onto Wonder? See, like, this is what they should have been trying to do, maybe. Like, send two people to a side lane. Try and kill the Victor or something. Or try and kill Caps. They just kind of got... Oh. Well, we... He's giga-fed. I don't know why I'm surprised. Perks is so fed. Yep, pretty disappointed in Splice in this game. They didn't do anything. I mean, I think they drafted a really hard comp to execute. Wow. Wow, there we go. Very, very, very one-sided game. Where Splice just kind of slowly lost... <laughs> a little disappointing um yeah so uh, i guess in summary uh i mean i said this a couple times um all right so what are the takeaways let's think takeaways for spice number one they drafted a composition which was very much focused around trying to play around bot side of the map uh, while I still, uh, while we did see them get a very small advantage bot, they kind of threw it away when Kobe got caught, and then they um, they failed to execute any kind of play towards bot side. Right? I think Yankos heavily out jungled Zerse this game and how well he utilized pressure, but I think he also had easier lanes which had more pressure. Uh, I think the Silas pick. It's not that I think Zerse is bad at it. I just don't think it really enables him to do much in the early game. Um, which means that Yankos, I felt, had a lot more free reign and control over being able to play around where he had pressure. We didn't see a single Gangplank ultimate used, only really to clear top side of the map. Um, and I felt like that the moment Splice, like, the biggest play, in my opinion, is when Splice swapped to top side. They then overextend on a play in mid, and then they, um, and then they end up losing Herald, and they don't get to swap out of the lanes that they were trying to avoid. So... I think this also showcases some of the issues with Humanoid, like, I think, like, he did what he could in this game, but I also think he tried a little too hard to carry, well, I, I, okay, maybe that's really unfair criticism, I think he was in a situation which is actually very difficult, he did find that one good pick onto Caps, and he's actually quite good in the mid-game at finding these little picks, which is pretty good, um, but, like, when you're on that assassin, and you're kind of looking at the situation, you're like, I'm really the only one that scales, maybe I need to carry, he, like, goes to these plays, and if he gets these kills, maybe it works out, 
but I did think he got punished quite a few times. But at the same time, whenever G2 were in a position to like camp him, they did. And I think G2 played really well around their win conditions. They got the Kiana really far ahead. They got a lot of gold into her, which means that she was always a threat. Um, the 2v2 was allowed to 2v2, and they successfully played through that. And I think that Yankos um, ultimately had like full control over the map pretty much at all times. And G2 seemed to read everything that Spice tried to do. Um, yeah, and then it got to a point where Spice was just kind of out of options and they just slowly lost the game, whereas G2 never really made any big mistakes. They overextended bot into the enemy jungle, which was a big deal, but there were no objectives for them to lose. And I think G2 ended, only ended up losing one out of tower top lane. That was it. And maybe a Drake. They lost a Cloud Drake, I think. But outside from that, G2 had a very clean game. Yeah. So yeah, I was a little disappointed in Spice. Draft needed some work. Uh, I also just wish that they tried a little more. Not to say they weren't trying and playing, right? But I think that there were windows of opportunity where they could have looked to make plays and they could have looked to do a little bit more. Um, and then for G2, like they just need to restrain themselves at moments. <laughs> I think Caps had just blood in his eyes and he got a little over eager. <sighs> So yeah, that's it. That's the VOD review for G2 vs. Splice. I'm going to stop recording now for any YouTube watchers. Um, you can check out other VODs around. I do them every week. Um, thank you very much for watching, and, uh, and I will see you in the next one.